Yo, what's up everybody? Chadley here, and unfortunately, when I released our Flak Nukem build uh, a little over a week ago, it was right before we found out that we were going to get a level cap increase up to 53. So I'm here to update that build for you, and it's actually gotten phenomenally better with the addition of the wedding invitation. You guys know I love this if you've seen my White Death Flak build that I released a couple days ago as well. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So with our gear... Um, we had a little bit of a change since our previous Flak Nukem. I actually got this 53 kill the Wisp with a Gamma Burst Anointment that is uh, really cool, actually. I hadn't really used this gun a ton, but it actually shreds on Gamma Flak here, especially for mobbing or any sort of shields on bosses. It just tears through it. So this thing is very fun to use. So then, like I said, the Wedding Invitation, we're going to be using a Gamma Burst Anointed version. This destroys, hopefully you guys saw in that opening montage, how much damage this thing does. You can one-shot so many bosses with this thing. And Wotan, when he splits, um, if you get Megavore on your side, you will just destroy him. I, I love this on Gamma Flak. I think this might be my favorite build to use the Wedding Invitation on, personally. And then moving down, um, we still have the Redistributor. I haven't gotten an updated one. And with all of these builds I'm going to be updating over the next week or two, I will be updating the save files as the weeks go on and I gear up more 53 gear. So just keep checking back for save files. I'll have the dates posted next to the save file with the last time I updated it so you guys know if you're getting a new one or not. And then we still have the Nukem with Gamma Burst. Not updated yet, but it should be fun to use there. And then my new favorite shield, we have the one-shotter shield. It's a triple amp purple. You get this from literally anywhere, vending machines, just random world drops, wherever. Um, but this thing is insane. It's really nice to use on flak. If you guys are having trouble surviving with it, um, just switch over to the transformer. You still do enough damage. You don't need the one-shotter. It's just for a lot more fun. And then for our grenade, we're going to be using the Hunter Seeker. This is because if we keep spamming this, we can get uh, Leave No Trace to proc. So our Nukem can regen ammo. And also it's really nice with the Kill of the Wisps. The Kill of the Wisps regens ammo pretty well anyways. But if you throw the Hunter Seekers while shooting this, you almost never have to reload with it. And you can just fly through mobbing sections. So those combos work very, very well. Then we still have the Bounty Hunter. Still one of my favorites. You guys can also use the Deadeye if you're trying to one-shot some bosses. Um... Actually, on Tront and stuff like that, I just use the Bounty Hunter. You don't even need the Deadeye. If you want to get super overkill, you're more than welcome to use the Deadeye, though. And then also, if you guys just want to mob, the Red Fang is another really good option. Basically, nothing looks at you. You're not really going to take that much damage, and you guys can just destroy him. You don't need, like, the Bounty Hunter or Deadeye to one-shot all the mobs with the Wedding Invitation and stuff like that. So that's a good mobbing option there. And then I actually switched up our Artifact to a Snowdrift Auto Idol. With the Atom Bomb, I was having lots of trouble with the Wotan fight. You just, with Flak, he needs movement speed during that fight. And I just like going fast in general in this game. So having the Snowdrift Auto Idle, I think, was the better move. You really don't miss out on that much uh, radiation damage. So this is why I personally choose that. If you guys don't mind going slow, then just throw the Atom Bomb Auto Idle back on. And you guys will be good to go. But let's go ahead and jump at our gear, sorry, our skills. But for our skills, it is exactly the same. Our orange tree did not change at all with the level cap increase. The only thing that changed is over here in the blue tree, we threw two more points into pack tactics to max it out for more damage. So at this point, we only have one point left. If you guys need your pet to stay alive a little bit more, you can put one point into mutated defenses. But if you're using the wedding invitation, you're going to be doing enough damage to where one shot who rescued who will get your pet back to full health immediately in one shot you guys are gonna be hitting over a mil almost all the time so uh you guys will have no trouble keeping your pet alive until you're at wotan and he just immediately dies after running underneath his feet but with the last point i personally put it into furious attack this thing gives four percent gun damage and it's really really easy to get max furious attack Otherwise, Grim Harvest only gives you 3%, so it is a little bit better just to spend that one point into Furious Attack, in my opinion. And then, we're still using uh, the same augments on Gamma Burst, Empathic Rage, and Burst Aid. 
And then our pet, we're using the Great Horn Skag just for the most damage that we can possibly get. But yeah, that's really all for the build. There's not really that much of change. We just changed a couple weapons around, our shield and artifact, and just added those three extra skill points. Otherwise, we still have all the other Gamma Burst gear in here. A lot of it's still level 50. We have a couple level 53 things. If you guys want to swap out this redistributor for a level 53 Brainstormer, this is a really good option. This thing just shreds when you are using your active skill and stuff and have your Gamma Burst out. Really good option there. But yeah, otherwise, I will be updating all this gear as time goes on and I get my hands on more good gear. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave you guys with some more gameplay of this running the takedown and stuff like that. You guys can see how it is. I won't waste any more of your time. If you guys want to watch that, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, we are really, really close to being able to apply for Twitch Partner. For the next 10 days, if we can keep averaging 75 viewers, I will be able to apply for Twitch Partner, which is mind-blowing. So if you guys want to help me out, make sure to go down to the description, click on the link to my Twitch, drop a follow, come say hi. We've been having a really good time over there. That's where we've been making all these builds and stuff like that, doing lots of science, all the goodies. So please come help me out if you guys are willing to. So thank you guys very much for watching. I want to keep this short, simple, and just a quick update. And I will catch you guys in the next update. See ya.